This is the Motor Cop Chronicles podcast with the Midweek News. Join your hosts, Iceman and Holstera, two law enforcement professionals ready to offer their unfiltered opinions on the latest news from the world of law enforcement. No filters, no edits. So be warned, the content may be upsetting to some listeners. Sit down and hold up. This may get a little bumpy. Whoops. I can hear you. What the hell was that? Uh, well, that the new intro when Freebird's here. That that yeah, you wasn't supposed to see that yet. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We won't so tell Freebird everybody. You, you got be back to prize next week. You, well, it, that y'all just got a little sneak peek of it, but yeah, there is a new intro. I've been saving it. It's been eating me up because I'm not good with surprises. I've had this shit for a week now, and uh, it, it's cool as shit. <laughs> so. He is shitty with surprises. Every time I mail him something, he goes, "Can I open it now, or do I have to wait till the show?" I'm like, "You can open it now. It's cool." <laughs> oh, Billy G's here, and uh, Hoppy Hops is here. Unfortunately, Freebird is not here tonight. He has a fuzzy yeah, hat, man. Fuzzy hat, yeah. Uh, look, got my Go Goat shirt on. Go Goats. Go Goats. Uh, what's up, Kelly? Uh, none of the Patreons took me up on. The shirts at my cost and free shipping. So now they're just up for everybody. So. What? I don't know. I, I guess, I guess spelling is necessarily important in y'all's police reports. Or you all got spelled. Check what, what are you talking about? Cause do you say that the suspect go G E U X? No, we to put the G. Store? This is a Louisiana thing. That's why that's spelt like that. Okay. So this is what your judges expect in a report. No, we don't spell like that in reports. Oh, okay. What's up, boss? We got Steve Gould here from Things Police Scene. What's up, Steve? Uh, love it. Uh, yeah, but no, that's a Louisiana thing, so you just hush your mouth, Holster. Well, it's like y'all got that, I mean, y'all got an entire city called Homo, and then y'all no, it's homo. rebuilt it. It's you Homo. rebuild it after that hurricane, so it just See, Hoppy, Hoppy, homo. Get, Hoppy gets it. But then, is that where you went to that homo restaurant? No, it's a homo. Okay. You go down there and call, start calling people homos from homo, or homo and see what happens to you. Hey, we got one down They're going to find you in an Indian reservation down there because there's the homo Indians in the swamp. You're going to be gator bait. Oh, I got the utmost respect for the Indians, but y'all just, y'all name your shit weird. It is. Yeah, says the guy from Florida. You're correct, Hoppy. Let me get this housekeeping out the way. If anybody wants a good cigar, go to mypatriotcigar.com. Use promo code MOTORCOP15. You'll get 15% off your order. It, uh, good cigars. Or you can order, order some, uh, yeah, gator bait. Or you can order uh, a cigar and send it to Holster since he's, uh, never had one. Also, with them Louisiana Go cigars. If yeah. if you want any merchandise, like I said, I got the Go Go sh- goats up there. That's that that episode we did where the goats caught the bad guy. Got other T-shirts. I'm kind of oh, I got these. Uh, I just got this in today. Uh, I have had them made. Here is uh, this one's called it's Free Bird Water Canning King Candle. Got and somebody it, getting blasted and, by and somebody water. getting blasted by a big water cannon with their feet up in there, and it says "smells like crowd control." I'm noticing that too, Kelly. I don't know what what the hell that is. I but at least know. you can hear us, and we're not lagging. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know why it's grainy tonight. Also, I got up on uh, the store too. If you want it, there's the the fuck your feeling candles. What does it smell like? We don't fucking care what it smells like. We don't care about your feelings. Just buy it. And it says on the bottom of that, if this hurts your feelings, guess what? Nobody cares. Go cry yourself to sleep and maybe change your diaper when you wake up in the morning. I think they're like, I think I got them for like 12 bucks a piece. You go check them out if you want some. If you don't, don't get it. It's up to you. If you want extra episodes, of course, uh, you can get joined the Patreon. Uh, I've got videos. I just put an extra episode out. A phenomenal rant I had because I came home pissed off like a son of a bitch yesterday and <laughs> put out an episode on Patreon where I just was uh, bitching away. What's up, Aaron? If you can't afford it, 
I know things are tight, you know, so if you can't, we'll keep putting all the free stuff out. And, uh, but we are going to shout our Patreons out. We do have a new full crew member, uh, of a Ronald Holstein. <laughs> I guess he just wants a coffee mug really bad. Uh, yeah. we got our, of course we got our hangarounds. We got Miss Grace Hudson. We got William Gbo and we have, uh, some guy named Chad Jenkins. We have Mr. Jared Nitrous, uh, it's Motor Cop for Life. He actually, uh, uh, sent me some stories, huh? Something that happened to him the other day. I have to do another episode. It was hilarious. He actually got me in a better mood and had me laughing. Uh, we got Mr. John Demink. We got Dan Carlson with Burley Boards. I'll go check them out and make some good products. We got T-Bird. We got Mr. Jim Pocrant from the Short Track Guys podcast. We got, of course, in the, uh, chat, we got Hoppy Hopson. He's our favorite truck driver. We got Mr. Blake Walker. We got A. A. Ron from the I Had to Say It podcast. Put out a good episode recently. We got Mr. Z. Palmer. We got Roy Spalding. That's Roy with the S. Everybody needs to wish Roy with the S at Roy Spalding a happy birthday. He had our birthday just a couple of days ago. I don't know how old he is. I'm, I'm, we don't know what color his hair is right now either because he likes to dye his hair different colors. We got JoJo, our favorite girl from uh, Australia. And we got Miss Kaylee Norris and Natasha from the great state of Washington. And, of course, the OG crew member, Melissa Holstein. Thank you all for paying my bills for me. So, other than that. Damn, guess- y'all get a thank you, shit. I all I get is king cake. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Do you know how much them king cakes cost me? Oh, I'm sure, and they are delicious. Because <laughs> there's got to be at least a thousand pound of sugar in it. Like it, it's just sugar with sugar jelly in it, and it's delicious. And it's delicious until you find the baby, and then you just choke on it. And you're like, oh. well, don't choke right, on it. Get to reading your first. I know, I know. I was checking this thing out to see why if I could do anything with the grain in this of it. I don't it know. It's fluctuating. It's the stream. It's not I us. Know. Oh, well. Well, doing the best I can. I'm going to see what I really look like anyway. Uh, let's see. Let's catch it up. Uh, forgot. Uh, Kelly says the live feed's kind of great. Yeah, we know. Yeah, you can hear us though. Uh, AA Ron's here. Of course, how you doing? AA Ron. How you doing? Said, uh, Kelly says the lady down the street for me is still missing 11 days now. I think someone killed her. She yeah, was a door dasher. Uh, after being a missing 11 days, I had to, unfortunately, is a, probably a, the right answer, which is sad. Uh, Billy wants to know if Aaron got a machete yet. Uh, I'm just happy that they don't call him homo cakes, Hoppy. Hoppy says he loves king cakes. Yeah, every year I try to send him at least two or three king cakes to have it shipped down there, and I, I get the field one. So uh I try to have some beads and stuff, it's, and it's it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but I do it for my buddy and let him have his king cake. Oh, I, I love it. I, I wish there was a way to, like, overnight actual boudin because everybody down here can't make it. So, but <laughs> I'll said, come up there again. Hoppy says the only thing you want is a homo cake. That's right, buddy. It's just for you hose draggers. A homo cake is two gay guys, like naked, with with their butt cheeks pressed together, right buddy, up against Holstera's head, right there, on I'll each eat side. Alabama hot pocket any day of the week. Do not try to intimidate me. <laughs> Come on. All right, <laughs> we do. We got some stories today, and uh, unfortunately, well, y'all might like hearing me bitch and complain because I got something that's not gonna make me too happy. Uh, he, he does like to bitch a lot. <laughs> they, they uh, everybody's heard about the, uh, retired police chief that got, uh, murdered, ran oh, over. I thought it was a sheriff. No, he was a retired police chief and he got ran over riding his bicycle. Uh, two juveniles. Of course, the, you know, they have some videos. If you want to see the entire, uh, unedited video, uh, I have it on the website. You go up on the, uh, if you're looking at your screen, it'll be all the way up on the top right and you just join it. It's free. It don't cost you nothing. Join, join on the website because you got to get no member section. And that's where I put stuff up there that kind of, you know, they don't want just out all over. So I, I got the whole un, unedited video of 
the police chief getting run over in that air in that section if anybody wants to go see the video they did arrest both of the bad guys thank god teenagers i figured they would the little dumbasses were live streaming it weren't they yeah i got video of course you know i always got video so try to anyway in las vegas two teens in custody accused of intentionally running over a former southern california police chief who was riding his bicycle eyewitness news reporter marco robles joins us live in studio with the details mark yeah john good morning this is the victim right here behind us las vegas metro police describing this case as appalling and a cowardly act from video evidence that they have collected they believe this bicyclist was hit intentionally and we have learned that he was once police chief in the city of Bell. He's been identified as Andy Probst, 64 years old. Las Vegas police say two juveniles were on a joyride in a stolen car. Dash cam video obtained by police shows the teens laughing and making comments while approaching Probst before he was struck and then thrown against the windshield. The 17-year-old driver was arrested the same day of the crash last month, but at the time, police were not aware of the video. After seeing it, it led to an upgraded murder charge and prompted a search for the second teen in the car. His arrest just announced yesterday. Andy Probst's daughter speaking alongside police, describing her father as a man of honor and integrity who worked for more than 35 years in law enforcement. Andy's life was robbed by two individuals who did not believe that lives of others matter. We believe that Andy's murder is a direct result of society's decayed family values and the strong effects that social media has on our youth. We as a family in no way feel that Andy's murder was based on race or profession. It was a random act of violence. In the criminal justice system, if you are a minor, and you are eligible to be charged with the crime of murder, you are automatically sent to the adult system. I am confident that that is what is going to happen in this case. Andy Probst retired as Bell's police chief back in 2009. He had since moved to the Las Vegas area. Live here in studio, Mark Cotarobles. See, and I haven't seen it, but what was the passenger egging it on? No, they, 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 I believe this was the third or fourth car they had stolen this day. They had been involved in numerous hit and run accidents in. Okay, but was the passenger at any time the driver? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm just saying. See, see what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to prosecute a passenger for those crimes. I mean, I get, uh, you know, possibly nailing them for, uh, aiding and abetting. Well, I think in the video it says see him get him or something like that. Yeah, I mean if he's so, proactively, you know. Oh yeah, he was proactive murder, with. He was proactive with it. He you know, him up. he's laughing, calling they him. Ain't the laughing N- now. Calling him the N word, which uh, I don't know why, because this man is obviously of the Caucasian persuasion. Uh, but and he obviously doesn't even stand a chance if they were going five or fifty. He's older. You know, a, a vehicle strike is hard to survive when you're younger. Hoppy, I totally agree with you on that right there. Uh, Kelly, like nah, I said, if you go, too high. if you go to the website, my website, motorcopchronicles.com and go join it, they, uh, it'll, you could go watch the whole entire video. Shows this poor man hitting the windshield, glass breaking, him hitting the ground and all of it. it it's not nice. Uh, principal, yeah, I mean, they both, uh, I don't know if they got, de- they ain't going to get the death penalty, but both of these kids ought to spend at least the rest of their life in prison, even though they probably See, but won't. That still falls underneath the, uh, Obama's, remember the act that he passed that said that no minor can never be, you know, serve yeah, life? Uh, yeah, but if they charge, if they, if they, uh, charge them as adults, they can. I don't know how that works. I don't know. I don't know. Of course, I also don't live in that state. I, the, I know it's murder in Florida. If but. they don't, if they don't put these kids away for the rest of their lives, they'll, they'll end up again. going for the rest of their life because they're going to end up killing somebody again because they're obviously homicidal. They have no, obviously something's wrong with them because they, they have no conscience or nothing right. like that. Uh, so, all right, well. <laughs> no, hey, hey, I'm glad the little bastard's getting past. Yeah, well, we'll see. it don't happen that much in prison no more as much as we'd like for it to happen to people like that. They got these kids separated. They didn't put them in there oh, with big yeah. boys. They might be in big boy jail, but they got them in segregation. Or in or something. 
Yeah, you can bet on so, that. So, hmm, I, I had to really look at this case because it was kind of bullshit the way I read it, and then I remembered the guy. So, you remember the story we went over, me and Iceman and Freebird, talking about the officer that discharged his firearm into a car because a man lunged at him inside of a car with the window up, and the cop felt threatened from the guy that was locked in the car with the window up, so he shot him to death. Yeah, he shot him through the glass, the rolled up window, and I don't know, weapon was found in the vehicle. No, they said there was a knife or something. Yeah, or maybe so, but the window was rolled but, up. And he lunged on the other side. Dude, I've I've tried to get through those windows. It's not as easy as people think. Uh, I'm sorry, but had he have gotten out of the vehicle with said weapon and done anything to approach me without that barrier, I'd probably squeeze the trigger too. But with him in the car, I, I'm like, somebody tase this moron. Well, first of all, uh, it was seven seconds, if y'all remember. It's just like a week or two we went over this. Uh, right. We showed the video. It was seven seconds from the time the cop got out of the car and ended up shooting the bad guy, which if the, he would have had a gun pointing, the time period don't matter. They did charge. Yeah, we, we said they, we said, I said it was bad shoot. They're going to charge him. They did charge him. I believe they're it, overcharging him. They are, uh, they're trying to, I think they're charging with, with, with first degree murder. I don't know are, how like first degree the murder. Time. And then manslaughter. I'm like, they, yeah, like three different murder charges from one. I, I don't see how you do this that. Shit? But like it, in Louisiana, to be charged with first degree murder, you have to have specific intent, like planned it out ahead of time. Like I'm sitting at my house. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my gun. I'm going over to the whole stairs house. I'm going to take my gun. I'm going to kill him. So if I plan it all out and shit, do it, right? that that is first degree murder. That's what happened got. there? Hopefully, what, bring some. Food. Yeah, what happened in this situation is not first degree murder. No, I don't even it believe it's manslaughter. it's manslaughter. It was happened in the heat of the moment. It was not planned. So I don't know why they keep overcharging. But I do have a video. It shows because he's wearing a shield on his chest. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it, I get it. Guy's a freaking moron. Let him go to jail for like five, ten years. But there's no reason to give him the death penalty. No, he know, uh, but, he was out on bond. He had a five hundred thousand dollar bond. Uh, Which means he doesn't get that fifty thousand dollars back. Think about that shit. Yes, yeah, so it's messed up on that. But he got called back into court, and uh, they redacted it. Breaking news in the case of a former Philadelphia police officer. This is him right here. The boy's young. I think he's only twenty seven, twenty eight years old. Yeah, he's twenty seven. I mean, he's he's a young fella. I mean, you can look at him. He's been on the force for five years. I know, but I guess I'm just getting so damn old. He looks like a school kid to me. Okay. Well, I mean, to be fair, you kind of do start to resemble Santa Claus certain times yeah, of year. Yeah, you just shut up. Charged with murder. <laughs> a judge just this afternoon revoked bail for Mark Dial, who is charged in the fatal shooting of Eddie Irizarry. The district attorney's office argued that granting bail in this case is inconsistent with the state constitution. Action News reporter Maggie Kent was in court as this all played out this afternoon. She's now live in Center City with the update. Maggie. Sarah, the but they're using the argument that he might be a flight risk or a danger to community. The man that, shot yeah. somebody on a traffic stop. <laughs> that, that's bullshit. He, he's not a flight he risk. He's not driving around town offing random strangers or shooting in the ra random homes, okay? he It happened in the line of duty. They took his duty weapon, I assure you. Let the man go home and get his affairs in order before he faces the possibility of a life in prison. Yeah, so I, I mean... I have the, nothing wrong with that. The, this is just the DA just being a DA. Well, yeah, and that, it's got to be somewhere up north because they're just grilling him. ...housed in a Philadelphia jail Philadelphia. as he awaits his preliminary hearing. There, he'll f find out whether he's facing first-degree or third-degree murder charges. We don't even know what you're facing yet. <laughs> right? Like, come on, man. Last time I checked, we had to have, like, charges before we yeah. were allowed to just bring him to jail. Like, that's... Shit. Former Philadelphia police officer Mark Dial walked into court today, but he would not walk out as he faces murder charges in the August 14th shooting death of Eddie Irizarry. Judge Lillian Ransom granted the district attorney's request and revoked bail, remanding Dial to jail. A big weight came off. Prosecutors That's argued That's with all the that potential. Is. Um, exactly. They're just. The family's going, Ooh. so, you know, that's all it is.
They're just trying to keep people from rioting. Uh, me and I don't get me wrong. Me and Ice Man are both on the same page. This guy is not ever being employed in law enforcement again. You know, no, he he he's, he, he deserved to he go to jail for from. something. He, that oh, was yeah, a bad shoot. It, five ten years, but does the man really deserve the rest of his life? Because if you think about it, in Louisiana, a joint will get you life. They will not. It, anyway, it's, it, it was a bad the shoot. Man but arrested they, for a dime bag, and he's now serving life. Until it was a third. Free. It was third offense. Nope. Yeah. Uh, free, yes, it was. It was third was. offense. Third offense. Don't care. Bag of weed. First degree murder charge Bullshit. on the table. Dial was not eligible for bail. The district attorney's office is looking for even handed justice. For the family of 27 year old Irizari, a sense of relief. Initially, Dial was granted bail, paying 50000 Sense of relief for what? He's not guilty yet. They just got him in jail. What was their relief for? Did they no, think buddy, he was going to. Was he going to do a drive no by? Longer. Was he going to do no a drive-by longer, at their house? <laughs> no longer are you innocent till proven guilty. You are guilty until the media says no, you're No, only if you're in certain employment, you're guilty until proven. Other than that, you're just innocent, period, which we're going to get into another case later on we're going to be talking about. Released. He's facing murder, voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, and other charges. <laughs> and what's appalling to us is, as the United family, that Dad was still able to go free today justice was made for now what about god is a philadelphia police officer i don't here know in this video fatally god shooting 27 year old irizari six times after a traffic stop in kensington his defense attorneys argue he heard his partner call out there was a gun before discharging his service weapon they say there was no premeditation in his actions there Did no they yell gun? In this world this I don't know. Case. It's never been a I agree with his attorney. It's not a first degree murder case. No. Uh, it, at all. No, because, I mean, you can get a flat tire on your truck or your patrol car on the way home tomorrow, a flat tire that forces your vehicle off the road, and you might hit a pedestrian. That itself is manslaughter, okay? That's the charge. Yeah. I mean, it was an accidental death. It just happened. Um, it happened in the line of duty. Five, ten years, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, no way would I ever send this guy up the creek for the rest of his life. Trust mm-hmm. me, he has to live with that. And he's also going to have to remember how he looked on the news, like stepping away from the front of the car like a ballerina. Yeah. Kelly said she planned on joining the page. <laughs> needs to get a new debit card. How have you, how have you hit, not had a debit card since 2014? Use Apple Pay. Uh Pretty sure it's what the, I did. the the one with the video on it from the the guy. You don't have to pay anything off. You go to the website uh, and you can on the web page they have a, a member section that's free. The Patreon I didn't see you have no to free pay shit. for. It. What on the website, the not on the Patreon. Click here. No, on the on the website, not the Patreon. You're retarded. Billy G says, uh. Well, they get treated like heroes in prison for, yep, you're correct, for killing a cop. A.A. Ron says he's hoping they will go in thinking exactly that and get cocky and grown up bad guys. We'll show them how it really is. And, uh, Billy G said he's going to be, uh, 58 in a couple weeks. Well, happy early birthday. Hoppy says he is now on YouTube because <laughs> he got kicked off of Facebook <laughs> for, uh, oh, saying, for saying that them two subjects ought to get run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh poor Hoppy. Mm. Did, did they, did you get a ban or they just kicked you off for a day? And Billy says, shame on Hoppy. <laughs> you said trucker's guilty. Yeah. Uh, only of a certain thing. You, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Aaron says, welcome to the club. Uh, Roy P. I think is going to be in the area coming up soon. Also, we all know Close. Roy P. All right, I believe you were up next. Uh, so we're staying in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, let me see. Let me get back to my text. Let's it's probably in between all that shit you were sending me. Oh, tell me you uploaded the, the, uploaded the video of the guy trying to kill the cop but accidentally shot himself. I had seen it. Uh, this is why I tell you to look at things, especially when I put directly under it, 
you need to download this video. We need do, you, do you realize what oh. time did you send it? I was like in the middle of putting all this shit together. I know. That's why I wanted you to click it and watch the video. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's an iPhone. They don't tell me when you send shit. Regardless, uh, police officers pull over a suspect. Suspect refuses to exit the vehicle. It, simple resisting. Uh, police officer reaches in the vehicle to remove suspect. Suspect pulls his gun up from his right and tries to turn to his left and shoot the cop in the face. The cop instantly grabbed his right arm and shoved him away. And when he did that, the suspect actually shot himself in the head and dropped to the ground. The cop's just standing there like, what the hell just happened? Because remember, he just pulled the guy out of the car and the guy's head exploded. So that's that's one for the good guys. <laughs> uh, let me pull the video up. I skipped the story. We just have to go back. What I'm thinking. Is this the the video fleeing a murder suspect? Fires yeah. at Dallas officers. No, this is the police say a man who shot and killed his roommate, then shot a responding Dallas police officer, was repeatedly deported for other crimes. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes, and I'm Steve Eager. Police released video of the shootout and the suspect takedown. The police chief says he is thankful his officer's vest protected him from a serious injury. Alex, excuse me, Fox Sports. Alex Boyer has more from the police chief. Alex. Hey, that's right, guys. You know, Chief Eddie Garcia says this is the seventh time so far this year in the city of Dallas that an armed suspect has fired at one of his officers. As you mentioned, thankfully, that bullet hit him in the vest. Meanwhile, Garcia says that the suspect, who is from Mexico, has been deported several times. So this dude is shot this cop. I got the cops going to be fine. Has been deported numerous times. I thought we didn't deport unless they agreed to prosecute for the crimes they committed in the United States. I don't States. know, but that he's been deported numerous occasions, and he's still back over here. It's 2002. September 14th, around 1.30 p.m., Dallas police officers Derek Williams and Christopher Mason are driving past a business on Syene Road in South Dallas when they see a man later identified as 45-year-old Juan Vicente Zavala Lopez shooting into a pickup truck. The officers circle around and confront Zavala Lopez. Get out the car! Get out the car! The officers return fire, get back into their squad car, and give chase while radioing for backup. Williams and Mason are headed southbound on 2nd Avenue in pursuit of Zavala Lopez when he suddenly makes a U-turn and heads towards the officers who got out of their car. Zavala oh, hell no. An Not with him barreling down on me. That Nope, they pin you right between that door and kill you instantly. Watch what happens there. They're going to slow it down. Williams exchange gunfire as the suspect drives oh, past. Sick. Dallas police slowed down Williams' body camera video to show the encounter. Chief Eddie Garcia described... I know people listen to our audio can't see it. They slowed it down. Pedro over here, when he's going by, back by the cops, done took, bo done took both his hands off the wheel and is like two-handed aiming shooting at the cops. Yep. The Describes what that moment shows. He let go of the steering wheel while he encountered my officers and was using a two-handed technique to shoot out of the car. Police say Officer Williams was hit by the suspect's gunfire let you do that in Grand on his Theft right Auto. side in his ballistic vest. By the way, that's one of the worst spots to get hit. And even, thank goodness, it didn't penetrate. The sheer impact of that bullet hitting, I've never oh, yeah, gotten like shot it, like it, that, it, thank like goodness. But yeah, had it's gonna, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt <laughs> extremely bad. It's not like in the movies where you just say, oh, he shot me in the vest and they just keep going. Oh, no, no, it's, no, not unless his just, adrenaline, not unless his adrenaline was so high. But other than that, he feels like, he knows he just got shot. Have you ever seen somebody shot at close range with a paintball gun? It's ten times worse than that damage, the bruising on around it. Like you can watch uh, YouTube videos with ballistic ballistic jelly, with the the uh, whole armor set on, and they shoot it, and they show how deep the round actually goes. Like it can penetrate all the way into you, even break your ribs. Um, shit, that impact alone can kill some people. 
Zavala Lopez speeds off. But within hours, Chief Eddie Garcia says the investigation leads detectives to a private home in Louisville. SWAT officers searching a barn on the property find Zavala Lopez injured and slumped over in a horse stall. Looks like that. After quickly evaluating the situation, a SWAT officer fires a less lethal projectile and then several move in to make the arrest. Chief Garcia says a 9mm handgun was still in the suspect's hand. Guns out! Guns out! Zavala Lopez had a gunshot wound to the leg, believed to have been sustained during the initial shootout with police. He was treated at the hospital before being booked into jail Friday. Chief Garcia says he knew the man he fatally shot during the initial incident, identified as 60-year-old Ruperto Salgado. They knew each other. Uh, I believe they were roommates. Uh, There's some sort of domestic type of issue that was occurring. Chief Garcia says Zavala Lopez, who is on an immigration hold, has a lengthy criminal history and has been deported at least nine times. Nine times. Another incident where the suspect, armed with a firearm, shot at our officers for the seventh time this year. And yet again, we were lucky to have our officers... The same guy? No, not the same guy. I was going to say, if the same guy does it seven times in a year, I'm not letting him out of my custody. I'm sorry. First of all, this this motherfucker should have never been back in the country. I don't know why they used to left the least around. I think they should have done all of us a favor. Uh, Don't comment on what I'm saying. You're breaking kick our Facebook. I think they should have done all of us a favor as taxpayers and take this son of a bitch out. 10-7. Well, if, he, put him, if he's put him in the dirt. He, he's, I mean, he, he he's, was blatantly shooting randomly throughout the streets racing around. He could have hit many of children. He could have hit many of people. He could have hit a many a thing. And that's that's the problem. That's a level of violence because he did it in the middle of the day. This isn't like a night stalker that breaks into your house and steals your stuff while you're on vacation. This guy is extremely violent. Anybody openly willing to open fire on the police midday or, hell, open fire on anybody. Because remember, the whole reason they even seen him is because they passed the scene and he was pumping rounds into a truck. Yeah, to, so, to shooting his friend. Right. If you're so, going to treat mean, your friends like that, Jesus. Shit, I don't even want to be your enemy. You stay away from me, but that dude has no place outside of a prison. No, Sorry. he deserves to be worm food. Because if if they do, let's say he does forty years here and gets out, still out, they send him back to Mexico. He's just gonna come back again. Well, hopefully, that he's been deported be nine fucking times. Wouldn't happen if Trump's still in office. That damn wall. Nine fucking times. He shouldn't be here in the first place. Uh, we're going back to Pennsylvania on this one. Uh, they had nine freaking kids, uh, juvenile delinquents, uh, escape from a juvenile delinquent jail. And, uh, they did it's catch them. It's like the same area, right? As the last guy that just broke out. Yeah. That, that big bad guy or whatever that they. Yes. Yeah, so and now everybody's like, what the hell's going on with this? Like all y'all's retention departments. You can't not keep anybody keep nobody in jail. in jail. Like literally even little kids are just walking out of jail. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Four o'clock, another escape puts residents in our area on edge, except this time it came to an end in a matter of hours, not days. Nine teenagers broke out from the Abraxas Juvenile Detention Center in Berks County last night, not far from where escape murderer Danilo Cavalcante was captured after almost two weeks on the run. It is Monday afternoon. I'm Sarah Bloomquist. And I'm Brian Taft. The big story on Action News today is that quick capture of those escapees in Berks County. We're told four of the teens actually went to a nearby home to turn themselves in. The others were caught after stealing a truck. Action News reporter Maggie Kent is live in Morgantown today with more on the eventful 12 hours overnight. Maggie. Sarah Bryan, we spoke to a homeowner who got that reverse 911 call alerting them that there were nine juvenile inmates who were able to escape. And then they got the ring notification from their front door. Four of them standing right outside, ready to turn themselves in. After nine hours on the run, four teens escaped from Abraxas Academy. A did- okay. How did this guy escape with no arms? Look at him. He's cold during his pants. Anyway, <laughs> I know. I'm just being sarcastic. So, uh, this, hear me out, because I, I want to play devil's advocate here. These kids hand themselves back in. But no, four of them escape, did. Four of them okay, did. Okay, regardless, once you escape from a jail or a facility, that's an additional charge, whether you're gone for 30 minutes or three days or three years. 
You're catching time. Well, sorry. And th- the other, the other set stole a truck and they ended up getting caught. These said, "Screw this man, I'm cold. I don't even know where I'm at." Like, where the hell get a hoodie in prison? <laughs> no, it's probably standard issue. Hoodies. Uh, but anyway, they, they, we get to go. These kids turn themselves in. Uh, they're back. So all of them are back in jail. Thank goodness. Uh, I think they, if, <laughs> My opinion is different when it comes to these these juvenile delinquents. I think they ought to just lock them up in regular jails, just like regular criminals, and maybe they'll stop fucking going back to jail so much. If they stop didn't. sending, no, you can't do that because then there would be instantly be a hierarchy of the older criminals teaching these young bloods how to go out and create better crime and not get caught. That's why you can't do that. I mean, these kids now, these little kids, these kids now are like freaking just homicidal maniacs. But, but think about it. If we did that, these, these elder prison people would create empires using these children because they're, they, these children join up gangs because they have no friends. You know what I mean? And then shoot up neighborhoods. Imagine if they had somebody with any inch of power, like a large organized gang pick them up. That, I mean, that's, no, you don't want to do that. They, we already know they go to prison. I'm not talking about, training. but see, you, you misunderstood me. I'm not talking about locking them up with the big prisoners, but stop, take them, don't, don't put them in these little, you know, cutesy juvenile facilities. Let's lock them up in their juvenile facilities, but like a real jail. Yeah, some, some of our counties have those. Well, these don't, obviously. Uh, well, remember oh, we did a story not long ago about they escaped all the way, like, a ton of them from a major facility and escaped to another state and they're like yo come get them and they're like no we're good you can have them you don't remember that story yeah jim says he's been listening to a ron's podcast and he liked it he's gonna listen to it here on out speaking of uh a ron over there uh my vape is not douchey everything vapey is douchey no you're douchey Anyway, these little bastards are back, caught in jail. Uh, you do? Do you? If you eat pickles, you're eating douche. I do not eat pickles. That's a free bird thing. Uh, I like to eat pickles. Next one is uh, <laughs> since we I got them out of water. Well, guess anyway, this uh, the suspect that uh, ambushed and uh, killed a deputy has been arrested. If y'all don't know the story, uh, I think this was up in Los Angeles. Of course, it was. Tragic, so upsetting in so many ways, Ellis and Christine. Uh, this community is still stunned by the shooting death of the deputy Saturday night, but they provided information that led to a suspect's arrest early this morning. Sheriff Robert Luna said he personally spoke to District Attorney George Gascon to urge the strongest possible charges be filed. But as you mentioned, the suspect's mother said there's another side to this story. Of course, there's always another side. This I'm getting. I'm, I'm just warning y'all now. I'm going to get pissed off because I got pissed off when I was putting this together and watching this video what was he on his way to church and no his no just stopped no, for no but, reason but just like everything else in this world today it's the victimhood mentality and of course you know just allegedly he, he shot and killed his deputy sitting in his unit not even having any interaction with with his piece of shit so yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but he's but he's the victim right the bad guy's the victim so we'll, we'll hear what, what his mammy has to say in a minute Groovy, no, we can't fucking understand her. Their son is mentally ill. There we go. Well, he's, he's mentally ill. For shooting that cop. He's mentally ill. As the tribute to the slain deputy grew outside the Palmdale station, Sheriff Robert Luna read a brief statement from 30 year old Ryan Clinton rumors family. Our son Ryan was a dedicated, hardworking deputy sheriff who enjoyed working here at the Palmdale Station. He was proud to work along the side of his partners that he considered brothers and sisters as he sacrificed daily to better the community that he served. The sheriff says it was a member of the community he served who killed him, rolling up on the deputy Saturday night in his gray Toyota Corolla and shooting him as Clinton Broomer in uniform sat in the driver's seat of his patrol car. 36 hours later, acting on tips from the public, the sheriff says they found their murderer 
The Special Enforcement Bureau took 29-year-old Kevin... Unfortunately, they took him alive. Well, he didn't fight back. That's the... Because uh, he's a pussy. That's, that's the Grady Judd line that says, you know, we would prefer it if you fight back. Yeah. If you want to give mm-hmm. up peacefully, we'll take you into yeah. custody. Salazar into custody after an overnight standoff. Tear gas forced him out. Guns and that Toyota seized. L.A. County Supervisor Catherine Barger had this reaction. I want Ryan's killer to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, and I'm really happy to hear that the D.A. is committed to upholding the law on the books. You have my word that I will not rest until that happens. But it may not be that simple. Tienes schizophrenia? He was diagnosed with schizophrenia, Salazar's mother said, was sick, had lost touch with reality. After her son was taken into custody, mother and sister spoke out, not condoning the shooting, but pleading for understanding. He's getting called a coward. He wasn't. He is a coward. First of all, coward. I want to say this. If this lady wants to live in this country. Learn how to speak the oh, fucking God. language, Here we okay? Are with that. You know, America doesn't have, I mean, we have a, a, a normal language that we've used for generations, but come on. America's a giant freaking melting pot. Yeah, but if you want to live people here, speak to, the regular language. Uh, well, English, people from all over the world English. used to love to come here, but it seems like the only people who want to come to America now live in South America. So we're going to have a lot of this issue going forward. So you might just want to pick up on a few words. It's kind of like the Cajun shit. I came up there and learned how to uh, say your street names. Fucking. I'm not, I'm not, if I want to speak Mexican, I'll move to Mexico. But right they're, not, they're speaking state. Spanish, dirty Spanish. I know. I know what the fuck it is. Of mind and a lot of parents that have kids that have schizophrenia, family members that have schizophrenia will understand us. The distraught family. No. Didn't answer any. Call. I understand. So you knew he had schizophrenia, and you knew he had a gun. All right, Mama Maria knew he had schizophrenia, and she knew they had guns in the house and everything else. Why is he out so, driving a car? So, so you knew he had problems. So instead of getting him help, you just let him run around and do what he wants to do. So let's charge you with accessory then. You need to go to jail also. How's that? How's that? Was he still getting medical help? Why were there guns in the house? What set him off? And Sheriff Luna asked for now. Does all that really matter? Think about this. If I had to go to your family and tell them that you were not coming home and you were just murdered, does it matter what the person was thinking or their condition? As we come back live, the sun setting on the flags well, like and half them. staff, the wind whipping through them outside the sheriff's Palmdale station here in the Antelope Valley. Now the focus will turn to the prosecution side. What if any charges will be filed? against Salazar if. while his family pleads for understanding. I'm sorry, what? Rumors family prepares for a funeral. Yeah, that's what he said, eh? Valley. Now the folks oh, my God, it's L.A. Side. What if any charges will what be filed if any. against Salazar while his family pleads for understanding and Clinton Broomer's family prepares for a funeral? He's a third-generation sheriff's deputy. His grand- I'm sorry, okay? Mama, mama can feel off sad and blah, 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 blah. All she fucking wants to. Fuck your kid. I wish he would have fought back. I wish they would have took him out, saved the taxpayer money. I don't feel sorry for you whatsoever, lady. You should have got your kid some help, done something, get the guns out the house or something, but you'd rather just let him run the streets because it was probably easier yeah, but, on you. So but their, I don't want to hear all their excuses. A, their argument is a very mute point. You're coming from a realistic approach. Step back and look at it. Okay, he's a, he's a special individual going through an episode. So, anyway, he's having an episode, but yet he's driving it around, he's in possession of a firearm, and he chooses to target a deputy that's not looking at him, someone yeah, innocent. Just, that was just he, a straight up... premeditated as shit. That was just straight up murder. Now, they didn't like forcing me to uh, learn learn Mexican. All right, let's just move on <laughs> to the next one. Uh, taunting. We're taunting. Oh, I'd hate to see how you'd spell that in Louisiana. T A U X I N T. No, that would be toxic or something. Uh, L A P D. Yep, maybe. This is in Ohio. 
Oh, these are the dumbasses that stole the car and then taunted the entire city trying no. to get them to chase them. One, one guy. Brenton, Ohio, or whatever, a man stole a vehicle, arrested after dash cam video shows him repeatedly taunting officers to pursuing. On September 11th, an officer uh, officer saw a stolen BMW doing donuts in several intersections. Officers made several attempts to stop the vehicle, but each time they approached the vehicle, the suspect took off. And they must not have a good police pursuit policy because they said due to concerns about public safety, officers disengaged from the initial pursuit. Uh, police. So, in other words, he was just having fun, and they were wearing ski masks. Uh, or the suspect was wearing a ski ski mask, and it was a stolen car. So, hopefully, he was smart enough to wear a glove. We're not gonna we're not gonna uh, watch the whole video because it's like twelve minutes long. We're gonna hit parts of it because it's quite. This dude was freaking just. He, he was he, just having fun. He he act like he just like playing like real life Grand Theft Auto. Watch. <laughs> He's just doing donuts on the. A suspect is caught on camera blatantly taunting police, doing donuts and enticing not, officers to donut. chase him. But no, all that fun it, it's kind of he was just doing circles. We'll get back. Right. Like, it, and first off, if you try to do a donut instead of a Jeep, you're more likely it's to... It's not a Jeep. It's a, I think it's a BMW. It's the same damn thing. It's not. Will the cop honk at him? <laughs> Dash camera video shows the suspect, later identified as 20-year-old Joseph Little John. Little John. Little John, yeah. yeah that's and even <laughs> dancing in his vehicle as officers watch on. Officials later determined the BMW he was driving had been stolen. No. uh Go ahead. Bro. Seriously? Uh, I'm like, able what are you good? We'll play? Do something about business. That's him right there. He just stopped. <laughs> yeah, He's like, he the, co- the, the cops that got pissed off, the cops that got pissed off, and they turned their lights off. They're like, screw this dude. We're not even chasing the door. And then this they, guy- they actually called their supervisor and said, can I do something about this? I mean, <laughs> he pulls up. And he's like, he stops right here in front of him. like, hey, hey, it's me. I'm right here. They're in an intersection. Yeah. I mean, they're all parked in an intersection. Talking us. 96. He's right in front of us, sitting at Eddie and St. Clair. Hey, Look at I'm at Eddie and St. Clair. He's like, oh, here we go again. Taste me. Vehicle's heading westbound on Eddie. We're turning around. Listen to the cop. He's getting aggravated. At first, officers <laughs> chase after Little John. Oh, my God. Chase after Little John. Oh, Tommy Jill. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is not funny. Just not. No, it's freaking hilarious because <laughs> in a minute the cops let's let's do a feather. A minute, like I said, the cops like turn their lights off and they're like, "Screw this dude!" Again, speeds by. <laughs> Look, he didn't turn his lights off. <laughs> he he, come, he passed the cop. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, I'm right here." At one Jesus. point, the suspect even opens the driver's side door and begins driving with it wide open. Is he going to ghost ride the whip? Well, he's just going to drive around. That's not donuts. He just drives around to like circles like, I'm right here. Come get me. It's like an eight-year-old finally yeah. the car. He's like, oh, and opens the door. Do you love me, dance. <laughs> he opens the door like, hey, <laughs> friends. I'm right here. Where are you going to park the middle of the road? And the mail is letting the car roll as you. That sounds like a holster click. Amidst all this, Little John continues his unsafe driving. Name. Look, they just they just let him go. They're like, screw this dude. Been traveling on the they wrong side of the road. Policy. That's him probably. Oh, here he comes too. back. <laughs> he's like, same he's same. like, why aren't y'all chasing me? <laughs> Don't you want to be my friend? I mean, come on, it's at least reckless. Reckless endangerment. <laughs> You've got a reason. This one gets mad. He's like, I'm going after this fucker. Again. Pro- is he not even called in? <laughs> he didn't turn his light. I think he stops right yep. there. Look. <laughs> Look I'm back. Head on, I mean. He's like, hey, I'm back. <laughs> Look, I'm doing circles in the road again. Look, I'll come by. Look, hey. 
<laughs> Look, I'm back again. Gas and come back. I'm back again. Vehicle keeps going from the bridge deck to Lake Shore. <laughs> up and down. They're just sitting there. He's being respectful but of the traffic. But it all goes off the rails when, in an effort to escape from police, Little John drives backwards down the road and crashes into a squad car and a pole. After that, another squad crashes into the BMW. Oh, God, this got pissed. Oh, I figured it. Yeah, I figured, I figured that Body was camera video shows these same moments <laughs> from another perspective. It does, Kelly. Body camera video from another officer shows these same moments from another angle. What's in the other one? I've been resisting for the last three hours. Eventually, Little John cooperates and officers detain him. Yeah. Right or wrong? Little John's my hot nut. <laughs> yeah, me too. Out of your put, two, put one, I want one <laughs> set of cuffs on him. You try to or move, two. I'm going to drop a knee that. on you. Do you understand yeah. me? Yeah. It's not going to be pretty. I I'm going to drop all my weight on you. You're not going to like it. Okay. He's already looking to. I was just playing with y'all. Why y'all so mad? Why are you so angry? <laughs> I have never seen a piece of artistic material quite like this video. This, this guy, when it's, I saw this, I'm like, this guy. It's like the cops are sitting there because they like, yeah, fuck this dude. I'm tired of chasing him, and he keeps coming back. It's like stopping, like, hey, I'm come chase me some more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. That's, now, um, now, as funny as this is, I'm about to show you how some other shit. Just like this guy that that murdered this deputy. This is this is another deputy, another pop that got murdered. Okay, and it's happened. Uh, he got murdered a couple years ago, and uh, <clears throat> the guy just got found guilty A fucking manslaughter. Well, I'm more stoked and about this, this next story. This, shit. this is not manslaughter. Of what we're about to talk about, it, it was it was fucking homicide, okay? And this is what pisses me off about it. So, oh, first, no, hold on. Let me pause that. See, see, this is him. He's gonna be. This is he got on stand and testify. Y'all see this guy right here? Y'all see him? I know y'all see him. Uh, let me pull. Let me pull this up right here, real quick. And go over here to the main screen, and I, I'm gonna pull this up. All right. Now, this guy right here, this is what he looked like when he murdered the cop. Okay? This is what he looked this is what he looks like now when he was in court. Does that even look like the same fucking person? No, he got a nice haircut. You got him cleaned up and, and all the stuff like that after he murdered this man right here. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go back to the video. What else I could do, I was back in the corner, I tried to leave. The man accused of gunning down a Daytona Beach police officer says it was all in self-defense. In my perception, I felt that this was the only option I have after I tried everything else. Otha Wallace says he was scared for his life and had no other choice when he opened fire. You testified earlier that you had no other choice but to kill Officer Ray, right? And it, after everything else I had tried. Fucking straight up playing the victim, okay? You see his eyes? That's straight up lie. If you got to search the entire atmosphere for your answer, buddy, you ain't got the real one. Y'all listen real close to how he's talking, because then I'm going to let y'all hear something else. That had become the only option that seemed to, to be... 
Adolfo Wallace was on the stand for about two hours giving his side of the story. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. I'm John Brown. And I'm Arlisa Goldsmith. Closing arguments are now expected to happen tomorrow. Fox 35's Maria Edinger was inside the courtroom for Wallace's testimony. She joins us live now outside the Clay County Courthouse. Marie, Wallace walked through why he pulled the trigger. He didn't. I'm sorry if I was unclear when I was communicating back with the station earlier, but closing arguments are actually happening as we speak. When I walked out, they had just begun a few minutes prior. The prosecution is speaking right now, and the defense will be next. Tomorrow, the jury will deliberate. This murder trial I want to talk about has been different. A lot of the time in murder trials, the prosecution is trying to prove that a particular person is guilty of killing another person. That's not what's happening here. Otho Wallace admits that he pulled the trigger. The discussion has been about whether it was justified and what led up to that shooting. He took the stand today to talk about that very issue. I was just sitting in my vehicle. I was listening to music. I'd taken a phone call and I just went back to listening to music and just relaxing and smoking my cigar. That's how Othel Wallace describes the lead up to the moments that ended with Daytona Beach police officer Jason Rayner dead on the ground. I was just minding my business. The prosecution says Officer Rayner approached Wallace, acting on a be on the lookout notice and potentially seeing a marijuana cigarette. Sir. Wallace says he didn't understand why Officer Rayner was approaching him and that he tried several times to leave. I was most definitely fearful because I didn't I didn't know what was going on. I hadn't had answers to my questions and I was just trying to see like because I'm a fucking victim, 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 victim. Well, from my experience, where he's parked is behind. It looks like it's behind buildings, backed into a tree line, yeah, sitting yeah. in a dark out mm-hmm. car. Um, from my experience, I've found prostitutes back there, people shooting up drugs, drug deals. Hell, I even found a pedophile one time with a victim in the car behind those same buildings. This is why we go back there. Well, listen, see how he's all talking like, oh, this poor me, this and that, and is the way he sounds. Y'all just keep listening. The, the, the body cam should show the, everything. The, the next, the, the next, the next thing I'm going to show y'all, you're going to be like, what? What's been happening here? I never, ever in my life been in that situation. And it, you know, that was kind of like one of my worst fears is being in a situation like that in the dark with no witnesses. The two start tussling. And although the prosecution has given evidence that Officer Rayner never drew any of his weapons, Wallace says he believed Rayner was reaching toward his waistband. Yeah, at that point, I was like, you know, something, this is not going to go right for me. Like, there was, there was a, a deep- this judge, you can see his judge don't believe a fucking word he's saying back here. Look at the face on his judge. Right. Unfortunately, this is a jury trial. It, it, it's, it's Florida. Florida. Most, you know what I mean? Most, uh, excuse me, uh, the thing that I fear the most is probably what happened to me right there. Wallace told the jury in that moment he felt he had no choice but to shoot Officer Rayner in order to get away. But the prosecution argued... You could have complied and not had to a point of having used deadly force, correct? I could have sat down. But yeah. they complied, right? I, I can't, yeah. Right. You'd agree. Bingo. Bingo. Right. So this whole situation would have been diffused if you would just listen. All right. Now, he testified all this stuff. Now, the jury came back with a fucking manslaughter. Okay, manslaughter is basically like misdemeanor murder. Okay, he's basically going to get a couple years in jail. Like we said before, five to ten, and and be out now. Now he murdered this man. Okay, now you see how he's acting? Oh, I'm I'm Mister Innocent. I'm Mister Nice Guy. First of all, did he look like this when this happened? No. Did let me go back? Let me let me just but do you, this. You don't need to judge a book based on its cover. The fact that he was hiding himself in the rear of a business and backed into a tree line. Tells it with the door cracked, doing what was perceived as legal activity. And, 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 and you know, that's, look, look right here. What don't you see when he's talking? Remorse. Why do you have his, why do you have all his gold teeth taken out? Maybe they weren't real. They, they, they don't just come you out. You see that? The way. Well, they can have them removed. Why do you have them all removed? If you got them all removed, his teeth would be rotted out, brother. I tell you, the once they're on there, no, they, they don't just. Okay, but anyway, they got them all cleaned up. Let's watch this next one right here. 
Because now we're going to see, and if the jury saw this, I don't know how these son of bitches could ever come that he did not murder this cop and they gave him manslaughter. Maybe I'll have to wear my gold grill next episode. My diamonds and shit. Oh, my God. An officer down. His colleagues trying to piece together what happened. Did he have Did he have a chance to get his firearm out? Yes, sir. So it was on him. On him. We took it off. So he's back to work on him. Immediate concern for the critically wounded, Officer Jason Rayner. All while trying to find out who fired the shot. Do we have suspect description? Anything? Damn, he didn't even get out of single shot. He never pulled his gun. His gun was still in his holster. This man put, shot this cop, ended up killing him. He didn't die right away, but he died. The cop never pulled any weapon off of his belt, a gun or nothing. But I don't want to stick to that either. Um, he's injured, and we might not be getting accurate information. We're working on the video. Did you see anybody running anything? No. I need suspect. Arrested days later in Georgia, Wallace is now in the... Is that the same attitude we just saw the guy acting playing the fucking victim in jail? That, that look right in court. there is fuck. I got yeah, caught. exactly. Georgia, Wallace is now in the Volusia County Jail, accused of attempted murder of a law enforcement. See the attitude when he's walking? It ain't, he, he, that dude was coached very well before he ever got on that stand. I would say that. We ought to give him an, we ought to give him an Oscar because that was a complete act on that stand. Well, yeah, somebody's, officer. that's not a I'm public sorry. defender. No, no. He ought to get an Oscar. Media, days before the shooting of Rayner, Wallace appears to call out the leader of the group. Look, you now, this is what I want, y'all listen to this shit. He posted this himself online just a couple days after the shooting. Now listen to this. NFAC. They say don't kill the messenger. I ain't never heard of a messenger carrying no block either. And from a post dated the day after the shooting of Officer Rayner. I love y'all. Black power. Stay strong as a nation. Keep fighting. Move forward. Don't let these pigs with you. I love y'all. Black power and shalom. Otha Wallace is still being held in the... Vol- well, he obviously doesn't know anything about the Muslim religion because that's not they're, they're kind of peaceful you got your radicals just like christianity does but regardless that was completely insane yeah but you're hearing all this right oh yeah i mean okay could, you know what i want to stop having normalized is everybody screaming something power black power white power latin power latin americans you know it, how about we all just be americans and we start treating each other with a little bit more respect and I really do think the entire world would be a better place if just instead of having resting ass face and going around shooting people because you don't like the color of their skin or the job that they have, maybe you're part of the problem. Um, yeah, it's fucking so messed up, dude. That's that part of it. Uh, my thing is, is, uh, oh God, there's more. No, no, I'm not going to play any more, but I'm just saying he, he posted that shit, but we, Y'all just listen to how he sounded, Mr. Poor. I the just, I, I was so scared. It was this, I was that, but you know, you have that. How could a jury find him? Well, what probably happened was he was sitting man there slaughter. with attorney being all smug going, what these bitch ass pigs going to give me, right? And the attorney probably looked at him straight and goes, yeah, the death penalty. You're about to die. And he was like, no, man, I'm going to get like two years. And he said, no. Seriously, change your attitude because you're going to die in prison. Like I said, that dude ought to get an Oscar because of what he we saw. Well. What we just saw is how he really is, and that was a straight up fucking act in court. And I can't believe it's manslaughter, dude, and they're charging that cop with murder. And but they're going to charge the cop with murder. Made make made a bad call, yeah. But but <laughs> it makes it makes we'll we'll take the piece of shit criminal murderers and we're going to let them out. But <laughs> it's like it's like the difference between an aggravated assault and an aggravated battery. And it, down here, an aggravated assault is verbal. A battery is when you strike or touch. That battery yeah, us too. Battery. Us too. But but so many people are like, he assaulted me. Okay, we well, called you a Karen. No, he hit me. Well, that's battery. Yeah, it, well, let's yeah. go to this next one because I can I can bitch about this. Uh oh, here we go. Uh, Steve says his partner was on a podcast that shooting. Cause horrible, horrible ripple effects. I, I bet you it did. I bet you it did. I'll just, it, it, the guy makes manslaughter. It, it, 
that pisses me off to no end. That this dude is going to get minimum is, time, and this and this young man life he's is be gone. Like a king, he's going to be treated like yeah, a king. His family, I mean, everything, and and this guy's going to get minimum time. I don't know what this jury was saying, what, well, what, what they were thinking. Well, mistake nothing. They mistake nothing about it. Idiots. If, Five years in a jail is a hundred times worse on a former cop than it will ever be on a career criminal. Oh, they yeah. are the number one targeted individual in the jail. Everybody wants to kill them. So, yeah, I, five years it feels like a lifetime. I know we keep saying, you know, give the other guy five, ten years, let him do a little bit. But that might just be a death sentence in there. <clears throat> this next one, I don't know who screwed this. This is an older case. I saw the story. I said, I got to put it up. First time I had seen it. I don't know who screwed this case up. If it was the ME, the cops, combination of all of them. But it's an older case. Some people, got, I know they, I think they've done it quite a bit on these true grind podcasts, stuff like that. But anyway, this young lady, I think she was 27 or 29 years old. She was, from what I've seen in red on it, that she was murdered. And, oh, uh, that's the woman that got stabbed in the back and in she the was, head. She was stabbed 27, 27 times she was stabbed, and she was also stabbed in the back of the head and stuff numerous times, and they ruled it a suicide. I don't know how you stab yourself in the back of your head. And, well, it's and, like that, that guy in Russia that was found guilty of pedophilia, but the judge let him out, so he was found the next day dead from a gunshot to the back of the head, and they ruled that a suicide. Yeah, suicide, yeah. All right, let's, I got, we'll, we'll see some video, but uh, suicide? Feeling new evidence in the death of a Philadelphia school teacher more than a decade ago. Tomorrow, Ellen Greenberg's family and their attorney will make their case to a city judge who argue her death was a homicide and not a suicide. Matt Petrillo is in Center City right now. Matt, you have some of the evidence that will be presented tomorrow. Yuki, that's right. You know, if you or I got cut by something, we bleed. It's just a part of being alive. But a medical examiner -uh. who reviewed part of Ellen Greenberg's body found something unusual. There was no bleeding or hemorrhaging after some of her stab wounds. Oh, yeah, it's because she was already Greenberg dead was and all the body, the fluid was drained out of her. Yeah, exactly. Like one of the stab wounds in the back of her head was like post-mortem. Right. I mean, well, so, if anybody could tell you, it'd be Iceman. So, but I can no, tell you, no, no, either A, they washed, they washed the body off and then relocated it, or B, they stabbed her after she was already dead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She was already dead with some of the stab wounds to the back of her head. Not right, unless so her, do it? Sorry. Not, not unless her ghost came back because she really didn't like herself that bad, so she haunted herself, and it stabbed her. Her, her ghost self stabbed her real self after she was dead. How's that for a hypothesis? Yeah. You think that would fly? Uh, I'm gonna write where the that. Hell did she die at home or school? I think it was at, it was at her house. At Juniata Park Academy. Ellen was a a very very. This is her mom good, and dad. Caring person. But her parents say she's she a had very her beautiful girl. I wonder if she had a love old. for the uh, high school boy. Mm, I doubt that. After she was found yeah, it's dead possible. in her mansion compartment dude. with more than 20 stab wounds to her body. It happened in 2011. Now, a decade later, Greenberg's parents are still pushing the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office to change her manner of death from a suicide to homicide. We want justice for our daughter. So that wound. In 2020, you might remember the Greenberg family attorney showed Eyewitness News images. Let's see these <laughs> pictures right here. How would yeah, you stab yourself is. right here? How would you stab yourself Right here. Wait, did they just leave all the knives? Like, did they have an entire kitchen knife set and just stuck all of them in? No, no. Knife? They they they're showing where the knives went in each time. I don't even know how you could do that multiple times yeah. without being on some serious drugs. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, he after the first one, you'd be like, ah, shit, that hurts. Yeah. Proved Ellen could not have stabbed herself twenty times. Have you ever been deposed before? Yes. Now, this deposition of a city high... Put it this way. Somebody being stabbed 20 times, that is, uh, that's personal. That's well, somebody that record, is, that's world. somebody that's angry with you, okay? If, if you, that, some, I'm, I'm willing to bet it, it was either an ex-boyfriend, some kind of stalker, or, or, uh, was it another woman? Was she having an affair with a married man? I mean, it's all kind of things, but suicide... 
Come on. You got, I mean, I've never been a detective. I've never been a detective, but, uh, I'm pretty sure a blind man that was mute with no legs, no arms and couldn't talk, couldn't see, couldn't speak, smell, hear or anything he'd, he'd, could figure. He'd hop could, his ass over there and say, that's murder. Could figure that one out. Yeah. You know, come on. Either, yeah, there's something weird with this. The, the entire thing stinks. Um, I mean, that's, that's very tragic that it happened. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know why, but I mean, <laughs> really? So whoever did murder her is just basically got off scot free. That's like, yeah, you know, we found the body in the middle of the lake with concrete shoes and chains wrapped around her entire body. And, uh, it was a suicide. <laughs> yeah, that's bullshit. Well, that's basically the same thing here. You got 27 stab wounds, two, a couple to the back of your head, post-mortem, and it's a suicide. Yeah, but I mean, even as a, the, as a deputy or a sheriff or a police officer, I mean, a coroner can come back with some shit, but I think you really have the option to, uh, be like, ah, we're still going to do an investigation. Maybe it was the investigating deputy or detective that did it. Because she was Where having was an this? affair. Maybe it was maybe and, the sheriff. And maybe they they did it and they covered it up themselves. Oh, like that one that happened in New Orleans with the body in the dumpster? Suicide? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, we, we found his head. We found the head in the basement and the body in the river. It's suicide. Yep, they walked <laughs> their head down there and yeeted it in the river. That makes about as much sense as America losing an $80 million aircraft. And yeah, it just yeeted the guy out, and he, the plane just they, continued to drive. They found it. Now, <laughs> the fact that the United States military had to ask for civilian help to find a $80 million piece of equipment greatly makes me yeah, worry. Yeah, they should have had it on Life 360. <laughs> or something. They should have at least stuck a tile in it or something. Like, But anyway, this yeah. young lady, this young lady, uh, I'm sorry, I think she was uh, right here. That's our... Very pretty young lady. She was very, very pretty. I think she was murdered by a, a jealous, man. a jealous That's lover, the man. jealous lover, or something like that. Uh, suicide? Uh, I would say not. What do you say? Oh no, her ass was murdered. It was definitely from a dude. I'm just wondering if it was like a teenager. And they did some freaky shit, and like oh, she, I, you were stuck the on these school teachers screwing students tonight. It happens all over America. Turn Pornhub off. Turn it off. It's, it's always it's always the attractive teachers. It makes here we go. Sense. This this is like, this is when the cops out there showed up to investigate this. They were like, "Damn." <laughs> All right, it's suicide. Let's go home. Okay, so on this next one, there's uh, apparently this wonderful city council decided they were going to vote in BLM activists to run their city council. Well, they decided not to show up for six damn months. It was just one. It was just one, not the whole group. Well, it says, I don't know, the city, city council. I just figured it was all of them. Because no, it was, it was just one day they elected. Y'all see Duke being all needy again. Where? Duke is always welcome on the show. Where's Duke? Yes. Oh, let me oh, put a bit. And they resigned. Yeah, she ended up quitting. But with funny, all the money back. You know how she quit? After she hadn't showed up for six months and she's been drawing a salary, but she quit. She had she wrote a note that says "I quit" basically, and she had her daddy bring it up there. Wow. Yeah, get down, buddy. Uh, watch this. Yeah, her daddy brought it up there. When are we as group people now are going to grow up? Joy in this. Next From Tuesday. From people living That's in Ward 1. I'm glad she didn't. Uh, it's unfortunate that it was forced. To people signing a petition to get Indira Shoemaker removed. I hope she's doing well and feeling well. And, and her fellow city leaders. Her. Some people have mixed emotions about Shoemaker's resignation made official in this brief hand- Look, here's, 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 I resign my position as council person of representative Ward 1 effective immediately. I bet you that shit was like a hundred grand. Look, look at No, it wasn't that much, but I'm just saying I mean, she had her daddy bring it up there. In resignation letter. 
Mayor Frank County says the letter, dated August 31st, was brought in by Shoemaker's father on Wednesday. He also delivered her computer and her phone, so she no longer has any city equipment. Shoemaker's resignation is something people have wanted since sometime after March, which is when Shoemaker's absence began. It's disappointing that she didn't do the things that she... Does this lady identify as a train engineer or just, that's all I'm I thinking. Would, I, is that she, I, she, where, where's the train that she just got off of? I assure you, Iceman, she enjoys trains immensely. No, no she don't. I, I think, bet you. Them I, tattoos I, and the, she's wearing the whole garb, man. No, that's I, the I think she's the more, party. she's more mainly than you was saying that she would do. Angelo Thorne started a petition back in April calling for Shoemaker's removal. It ended with more than 500 signatures. I mean, That's not that much. Nobody wanted this. It's a small area. How the, damn small? It's in Des Moines. People? Des Moines. Where the hell's Des Moines? Iowa. Where the hell's Iowa? I know where it, Illinois it, is. It's just part of the United States. Just put it that way. It's, oh, it's, the, it's, it's the purple one on the map. Is that the? It's the purple one. States, it's like, the purple. You land in those states. No, it's fly over. it's purple. The whole damn ground. Jeremy Gertz says, look, despite green. that, he's grateful that Shoemaker stepped down, but also grateful Rather for what issues masks. she highlighted. I think it was during COVID. Uh, anyway, on the second one, I, I think this is the right one. This this is what's wrong with America today. Looking at how the Des Moines Make City sure Council provides accommodations thing. during its meetings. <clears throat> Stephanie, during the pandemic, oh, this not the one? she said she's had problems like this in the perspective. That's not the right one. Anyway, they uh, she she didn't show up six months. I think the yearly salary for this this position is like twenty six thousand. I think she oh shit. But I think they said she got a total of fifteen thousand. The thing is, is uh, for that you know why you got to work a full time job just you, to do it. You know why she hadn't been showing up? Because she caught COVID. And she had to spend a week by herself in her bedroom. And she already suffered from clinical depression. And after spending a week in her room by herself, she got very depressed. And after that, she was having a hard time getting back into society because of her clinical depression. And that's why. That's exactly what the other videos I watched said. She said it out of her own fucking mouth. She is clinically depressed and is no longer able to function in society as a normal person. She needs to have Zoom Zoom conferences on everything she does. All right, bounce to the last one. See, where is I really? Read a map. <laughs> and Hoppy says it's the next state west of Illinois. Thank you, Hoppy. It's the purple one. All right, read the last one, the Arkansas Trooper. It's the purple one. Arkansas Trooper. This guy here, I don't know if I put a video on that one or not. Uh, it don't matter, we're going to have to watch it. It's not, did I do a video? Let me hold on. thought I did. How the Des Moines City Council provides accommodations. Uh, Arkansas State Trooper is retiring. Anyway, this Arkansas State Trooper, they were in a, a pursuit of several vehicles. At the, the, the vehicles were doing 100 plus miles an hour down the interstate. Uh, this trooper, um, he must have been were 20. Were they actively trying to stop it or were they just being toyed with No, they, they were trying to stop it and you're frozen for some reason. And, uh, oh, it don't matter. We're almost done. And, uh, but anyway, he, uh, he comes up. He was there chasing the white sedan and, uh, he made a slight little error in judgment. Uh, running a pit uh, over. On the wrong car. Take a look at this. <laughs> According to ASP, troopers have been chasing cars that have been going above 100 miles per hour on I-40 in St. Francis County. Corporal Thomas Hubbard performed the maneuver on the white sedan that you see there in this video, but it turns out it was the wrong white sedan. No oh, injuries came shit. out of the collision, but shortly after ASP started an internal yeah. investigation, Corporal Baby, Hubbard you submitted a new his car. letter of retirement. You, you getting a new house? Since. A spokesperson for uh, anyway, the guy said, driving state trooper, I guess he had plenty enough time because he's like, fuck. He's like, guess what, guys? 
I'm out. I, I retired, put my paperwork yeah, I, in. I'm done. I'm doing as I did. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, of course, they say, well, the internal investigation is still underway. Well, good for them. He retired. What are they going to do, fire him? Too late. Uh, Thank you. He, uh, yeah, he accidentally pitted the wrong white sedan. Uh, Don't get those, me wrong. That, that is a career ending move. Those people were, uh, like actually pulling over if you watched them. <laughs> You know, they're probably it, in there uh, eating ice cream with the children on the way to church. No, look, that was that was a big four door Cadillac. Well, that was wow. grandparents. That was grandparents. That was old people. Yep. And they they had Joe Biden in the back eating eating ice cream. No, he was sniffing the kids in in the backpack in the third row. Yeah, and he was sniffing them, and he was like, "Oh, which way I go?" It's like, uh, yeah. You know, he's trying uh, to say he was on in nine or he was the ground zero on nine eleven's memorial. Yeah, we all know yeah, he had that. Alaska. Yeah. Well, that was like when his house caught on fire too, right? And he almost died. Well, he wasn't even at home. Had, he wasn't even you home. Got to stop telling him things because he just tries to relate with people too much. Yeah. He's like, I used to be a truck driver. No, you didn't, Joe. Stay the hell yeah. away from the truck. I, I was out in the, the woods one time with 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 with, with pop tart and. And, and, and good the smacks mullet. and 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 all of a sudden, hurt me. Bigfoot come out the woods and he said he wanted to hang hang out with me. And my 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 old pappy daddy told me he's like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you you know you you know you know the thing saying you know you you got to respect got hairy legs. You, you got to respect everything and, and he had really hairy legs and 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 I like to rub them and watch them dry and. And just because somebody's hairy, you can't be mean to them. Because uh, uh, them hairy kids are just as smart as white kids. Yes, they are. Uh, which way? Which way I go? Uh, I don't know did, about did y'all. See, I don't know about you, Holster, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to bed. Whatever happened to your dolls? Anyway, <laughs> God, I brought it up. Anyway, did you see the Hodge twins I sent you? Where they, there's literally Spanish-speaking people. That are angry because they want jobs and they're holding up signs saying that they want jobs and they were promised uh, a salary and work. And they're all illegals and they don't know how to speak English, but the signs are all in English. <laughs> so somebody is making these signs for the illegal immigrants to stand in this <laughs> town hall in Chicago. Well, of course. Well, we only got, I don't lost most people. Guess I'm boring y'all tonight. Uh, no, you went all political, left wing, you know, just bond uh, lover. You are. Just, uh, y'all vote for the hot nuts. I'm voting for the, uh. Oh, with, the taunter. With, with John, big, little John or whatever. The taunting yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, hey, Mr. Police, man, I'm right here. Uh, doing that. Yeah. We just dropped off. I was <laughs> like, fuck you. Yeah, it's cause, you know, everybody likes Biden. No, I'm just kidding. It's after nine o'clock. Everybody's like, oh man, we gotta go to bed. Yeah, we're a little bit running, running a bit long. So, but I'm voting for that too. We'll give y'all a minute or so. Uh, if y'all were here in the beginning, you saw a little snippet of the new intro. It is that the guy did a great job. It's quite funny when you hear the whole thing and, uh, don't tell, uh, Freebird and we'll see it. Uh, I was even keeping it from old frozen holster there. Hey, I actually uh, prefer I this. Do, just stick, that, just stick I, that picture up every time we go live. I do, uh, I do, uh, plan on, cause I, I, I want to do a live Friday night. You can join me if you want to, uh. Friday? Oh, you're in the hospital, uh, Robbie? I hope you're okay. What the hell? It, did some drunk asshole hit you while you were driving an 18 wheeler parked on the side of the road? Kelly said, a little John is hers too. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That was just, I look, from a law enforcement aspect, I straight up would have just been like, you know what, Sarge, where you at? Been like, you know what, if I can't go after this asshole, I quit because this is just insane. <laughs> the fact that we can't even slow pursuit, like proactively follow him and act like we can do something, just zero, just sit there and let him egg you on for hours. No, sir. I'm yeah. sorry. Get, guess who won? Guess who won? Little John won. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at least he knew where Iowa was. <laughs> You're a stupid dumbass. Hey. What, it is next to Chicago? You dumb motherfucker! Little John just wanted to play with the popo. is all he wanted to do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not even bullshitting you. Like, if I've had incidents like that with, like, rookies and shit I've messed with when I was off duty. 
But every time I pull up to the door after screwing with them a little bit, I'm just like, dude, that was the funniest shit because I knew you couldn't stop me legally. You know, like antagonize somebody at a red light, you just you just floor it all the way up to the speed limit and then stay at the speed limit. And the cop's like, give me five more no over and I'll pull you over. Oh, and Hoppy, uh, while you're still here, your your T-shirt you won is in transit. It is estimated to arrive uh, in four more days. I don't know what's taking so long. But it's September hey, Sunday. Hey, I got a metal cup, right? Yeah, Sunday is. Uh, you should be getting your T-shirt. Oh, the biggest size that this company had was three X. So uh, I hope I hope it fits. Uh, but Does it fit you? Three X, yes. It'll it'll fit him then. 3X will fit me. Uh, yeah, I mean, because you, didn't you buy like three of them to cover your Harleys? No. Uh, Hoppy says he's got a leg infection. <laughs> well, we hope you. I hope you're feeling better with that leg infection. It's better than having to clap. Uh, just, just saying. Uh, <laughs> six hours, six hours uh, west of Chicago. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good, uh, good rest of the week. I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm just saying right now, I'm going to do a Louisiana crime live Friday night. We'll plan it for 7 o'clock. Y'all also pay attention. Your time? For, 8 o'clock my time? Yes. You can okay. join if you want. Uh, let me know if you are or not, and I'll send you stories. The, uh, or I'll just use the same stories I sent you for the episode we were supposed to do. <clears throat> and anyway, I'm not listening to him right now. And I hear a gnat in my, I hear, I hear a gnat in my ear. And... uh. It's them dog pecker gnats you got. <laughs> uh, Saturday. Like, yep. Saturday I do have uh, LSU football. So if you want to ride along with me on these escorts, uh, make sure your notifications and stuff are on. And then you'll uh, be able to find out where Freebird gets all his free food. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, like I said, Saturday I'll be doing a whole bunch of escorts, uh, all day long. So well, everybody. Shit, I was sitting. I was sitting there at that event last weekend, you know, the campaign thing, and I'm watching all the football games on TV, and I'm like, where the hell's the LSU game? And the people sitting in the, the restaurant were like, well, I guess they ain't playing nobody important. I said, well, shit, that's to be the fact. I, I figured wouldn't nobody watch the game. Well, last I mean, last LSU, week it was – last what? week they were uh, at uh, – It ain't the Ohio They State. were away. They were away last week. They wasn't at home. Alabama. Uh, Hoppy says his leg looks like a sausage stuffed in a roll. That sounds delicious, Hoppy. Just, yeah, I mean, making me hungry. Could, yeah, if I had some boudin in a roll right now, <laughs> some spicy mustard. Really, really, 